I'm Brian Trifon, also known as Trifonic, and I want to show you a uh, way to abuse the time stretching algorithms in logic. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, um, there's different time stretch algorithms that you can use to get different effects. So I have this um, electric guitar Apple loop here. Uh, it just sounds like this. This is unaffected right now. And so one th type of effect that I really like is this kind of pulsing Steve Reich, um, you know, granular synthesis type sound. And so actually one of Logic's time stretch modes, one of the flex time modes, is an actual granular synth. So um, if I hit Command F, or I just hit the uh, flex button up top, it brings me into the flex mode. And then on the track, I can choose what type of time stretch algorithm I want to use. So there's slicing, rhythmic, monophonic, polyphonic, so on. So if you're actually trying to make proper sounds and get things in time, um, there's a whole different approach, but I want to destroy the sound. So uh, what I'm going to use is the tempophone, which is essentially just a very simple um, granulation algorithm. So I turn it on, and you can see over in my inspector over here that I've got a couple parameters. So under my flex mode, you can see that I've got grain size and crossfade. So um, the first thing I want to do is actually just stretch out the sound. So when I'm in this flex view here, what I can do is just drag my mouse up to the top, in this top corner, and then just stretch this. So I could stretch this as far as I want. Probably uh, 32 measures is enough though. So let's hear what that sounds like, just stretched out in this tempophone mode. So that's kind of interesting, very resonant. Um, and if we take a look at the parameters here, I can adjust the grain size. So right now it's a really small grain size, it's uh, 49 milliseconds. Um, but if I drag this up here, I can have much larger grains. So I can have 500 millisecond grains, so let's hear that. So you can clearly hear each grain, and what's nice is when they overlap a bit, when it sort of transitions over grains, um, and you get this pulsing, like it reminds me of the music of Steve Reich a little bit. Um, and so this is an effect I really like. And so I can adjust the grain size here, I can make them shorter. Right, and then it's a faster pulsing. Um, and the other parameter here that I have is crossfade. So right now it's very smooth, like each grain has a really smooth envelope. It fades in and fades out. Um, there's no clicking or anything, and that's because I've got the crossfade set to 100%. So if I turn this down a bit, there's a little bit more attack to each grain. That's also a nice effect as well. And now if I adjust the grain size to something even shorter, so shorter than 300 milliseconds, uh, it starts to just resonate. It becomes less of you hearing each individual grain and you hear them overlapping. It just starts to get this uh, intensity of sound. If we get really short here, like 19 milliseconds, it's pretty crunchy, pretty harsh. So get rid of some of that clickiness of it, I can turn up the crossfade amount. So let's hear that. So then we've got a whole different kind of texture here as well. So um, by adjusting the grain size, you can get a wide range of, of either pulsing sounds or these, these kind of uh, ringing, intense, granular sounds as well. The other algorithm that I really like is the monophonic mode, um, especially on drums. So let me show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and just mute this channel, turn off the uh, tempophone. And if we look below, I've got this uh, Apple loop that's called two-step backflip beat. So let's just hear what that sounds like with no processing. All right, so that's pretty cool. Pretty just simple little beat that's happening. A lot of stuff going on. So, um, you know, normally if I were going to time stretch this or just get it in time, I could use any of these modes. Monophonic is sometimes works, or polyphonic is actually probably even better. But if you want to abuse the sound and really stretch it for, uh, you know, make it 800 times longer, uh, monophonic is going to do some crazy things. So let's take this and we'll drag this corner out, make this really long here. So, you know, 
like 64 measures. And let's hear what it sounds like. So all these strange, really grindy artifacts. And so in here, you can usually find some pretty cool sound effects. Um, so let's go over here. So got these nice, like this could be like a bass sound or some kind of uh, strange sound effect. Um, and what this monophonic mode is going to do is it's going to make it really grainy and kind of harsh. If you want a smoother sound, you can switch this to polyphonic mode. And we've still got this really long stretch, but it's going to be a, a more smooth sound. And these can also be really interesting for sound effects as well. And so sometimes what I'll do is just render my stretch track and pull out little bits that sound really good and load them into a sampler. So um, let me do that real quick, just as an example. So I actually like that monophonic mode a little better. And um, I like this area right here. I think that's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is just cut that out. So I'll grab my scissor tool here and um, just cut this little bit right here. And uh, then one of my favorite quick features in Logic, bounce in place. So what I can do is hit Control B um, so I can bounce this time stretch segment to a new track. Uh, so I want to bounce it to new track, mute the source, and um, I'm going to include the volume and pan information. There we go. So now if we uh, listen to that, we've just got that time stretched a little bit right here. So that's pretty cool. So I, I could actually load this into a sampler if I want. Um, and so one way to do that that's uh, that's real quick is if I control click on this um, and I look under convert menu here, I can convert to new sampler track. Uh, or the shortcut is control E. Um, and what that's going to do is just sort of automatically create an EXS24 instance with this region loaded into it. So um, it's going to ask me, do I want to convert regions to new sample track? Do I want to do it from zone, from regions or from transient markers? In this case, I want to just do it from regions. I just have this one region. That's all I want loaded. Um, and then I can set the trigger notes here, the range. I'll just leave them as they are. So I hit OK. And now I've got my sampler instrument track. And if I open that up and I click Edit to look at the mapping here, you can see I've got this uh, note here all the way down at C minus 2. That's that's where it mapped it. So if I wanted to, to have this, let me rephrase that. If I wanted to move this to a different root note, what I could do is just hold down Option and drag this. Um, so maybe C1 is more reasonable. And I'm going to stretch out the range of the zone, because right now it's just on one key, but I want it to cover the span of the keyboard. So I can just drag right here. and. Um, drag the other direction. And so now this sound, I can play it on any key. And I've got that cool time stretchy sound effect. And so sometimes if you have the time, what you can actually do is you could loop this sound um, and tune the loop and actually use it as uh, an instrument. Um, so there's a lot you can do once it's in the sampler as well. Um, but in any case, you can see there's a lot you can do with the time stretching, and of course you can do normal getting correcting time, but in terms of uh, interesting sound design and abusing the sounds, there's a lot you can do as well.